All right, gang, welcome back to another episode of Marketing for the Rest of Us. It's Chris Angel coming at you with episode 363. We are two away from a year's worth of content. Isn't that crazy and so cool? Thanks for hanging out with me in this journey. I don't know where you started listening to this show, but if it's from the beginning, like kudos to you, super fan, hashtag super fan. Thanks for being here. All right, um, candidly, let me say this before we start. <laughs> this is uh, my second take. It's not a live. I, I've been doing these pre-recorded for the last uh, handful of episodes. They're not lives anymore. And I got halfway through. I got five minutes into my uh, my record my first recording of this episode, and I started to ramble and I started to feel like oh, I'm, I'm like I'm I'm out in no man's land right now and I don't know where to go with this. So super funny to me because I teach this, right? And what I decided to do was go back to my framework, the framework that I teach in the Groundswell Method Intensive. I went to the framework and I wrote out or I, 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 I mapped out what I really want to say to you based on what life is teaching me right now. I actually went and used the map. It's called the Groundswell Map. I went and used the Groundswell Map and I mapped out the message that I wanted to share uh, based on what life is teaching me. So, you know, look, 363 episodes in, and then four years of other episodes as well, right? Like, I'm still doing the work. I'm still doing the work. I'm still using the framework. I still get stuck. I still ramble. So, you know, don't give me this. I, I ramble and so I can't produce any episodes. Like, that's just part of the game. And 363 episodes in, I am still find myself rambling at times. And guess what? If you ever find yourself stuck like that, look, s submit to the framework. Go back to the framework and use it because it works, right? In a matter of less than a minute, I swear to you, less than a minute, I mapped out the thoughts that were swirling in my head and I was able to get a clear like path for how to make this relevant to you, right? Okay, so let's start with the facts of life, okay? This is what we're talking about today, the facts of my life. I am a dreamer, right? I am a dreamer. And that's good, like it served me because it's led me into new realms of living, right? It's led me into adventures that will be uh, so fun to remember uh, on my deathbed. Like to be like, this is the life I lived, that was sponsored by the dreamer in me. So kudos to me, I'm a dreamer. Now here's the hard part of that. As a dreamer, as a half cup full kind of guy, as a positive like let's figure it out kind of guy, what I don't often do is look at the facts of my life because they're a downer, right? There are always, when you're in the game of expansion, you're, there's always something new to expand into. And from that, you can look, at, um, when you get grounded in the, the facts of your life, it is easier to see where to go. But, but I have never wanted to look at the facts of my life because they're a downer, like I said, right? And there is this weird mind game I play with myself where you know, I love The Secret, the movie The Secret. I love the idea of the law of attraction. I love the idea of vibrations and that it, I, it, when I start to visualize my life and where I want to go and I, and I can get the feeling of what it, what it feels like to live that life right now, those feelings are awesome. I'm like, wow, that feels great. And, and conversely, what I don't want to do is start to feel the vibration of not having that. And this is a problem because what I end up doing is hiding from the facts of my life, the facts of what's not working in my life, so that I don't end up feeling the vibration of those things. If I said it straighter, if I said it more, more plainly, I would say like I'm lying to myself about where I am because I'm trying to focus on where I want to go. So, you know, you could put this in the context of um, my health and looking at what, it, what, is, what does my diet look like, what does my body look like, I could put this in the context of my bank account. What does that look like? Um, there's just, for a, while, for a long time, there's just been this fear of, or look, maybe not even a fear. I think maybe I'm past the fear of it. It's just an irritation. It's like, stupid, why am I still here? Why does it still look like this? Why does this area of my, area of my life still look like this? And then I'm just irritated and I don't want to look at that and whatever. So you can see like, look, already, I'm setting myself up for fail for failure. I I'm learning this because I'm not looking at the facts. Now you might say, "Well, look, Chris, if you're going to look at the uh, if you're uh, what's wrong with not looking at the facts? Like, keep your eyes set on the 
the goal, like keep your eyes set on the destination. But here's, this is why this is so powerful for me, because what I'm finding is that when I go look at the facts of my life, I'm, actual, I'm actually clearer about what I want. There's a question people ask, right? Like, what do you want? What do you want? And that, for some odd reason, can be a really uh, hard question to answer. What do I want? And I might give you an answer like, oh, well, this is the income number I want, or this is, this is the kind of life I want. But there is this unsettling, like, ambiguous feeling of like, I don't know, is, is that what I want? Why do I want that? I don't know. Right? No, so if I asked you, let's pause. If I asked you, what do you want? Or maybe I asked this, what do you want in your bank account? What do you want in your marriage? What do you want as a parent? What do you want in your spirituality? What do you want in your body? If I asked you some things that you wanted, sometimes that can be a, an, an odd or hard question to answer. At least for me, but maybe you have it all figured out. So that's good for you. High five. But for me, it's like, it's, it's elusive. It shifts. It moves on me. I'm like, what do I want? I don't know. I want, kind of want this. And who's answering that question is my dreamer. My dreamer's like, this is what I want. But then when I try to create goals or action plans, this is really important. When I try to create goals or action plans towards the thing I said I wanted in any of area, in any area of my life, I think the place that's kept me wandering in the wilderness of my life is that I don't actually have a concrete plan. The plan gets the the plan can get hard. What makes it hard? Now, I can get very specific, but but even in the specificity of that plan, what makes it hard is that I'm not being honest about where I am. So if you're not honest about where you are, it's very hard to create a plan to get to where you want to go. I'm learning this. I'm learning this. I think I did a re an episode recently on this, but I'm learning this, right? Like the it's so important for you to get grounded in the facts of your life. So, look, here's here is the if I had to say it like a problem, the problem is that I'm not looking into the facts of my life. And and how that spills over then is and how that affects me is that I end up wandering around and around and I set I set goals and I set plans and around and around I go. And it's all very elusive, it feels. So when I set a, so listen, here's the deal. When I get grounded in, this is the fact of my bank account. This is the fact of my marketing. This is the fact of my business. This is the fact of my marriage, fact of my parenting, fact of, when I get into the facts of it, by the way, how I get into the facts of it is by grading it on a scale one to 10, right? So on a scale of one to 10, how would I rate this right now? I'd rate this a three out of 10. Why? Okay. And then what starts to come out are the facts, right? Well, because of this, because of this, because of this. When I can grade my, the facts, when I can grade my, that area of my life, here's what's interesting. I start, I say to myself, what would make it a 10? Or if I'm really low, like a three out of 10, I'm like, what would make it a seven? What would make it a seven? And I start to have a very tangible goal, a very tangible target that is in response to the fact. This is the fact of where I am. This is where I want to go. What would make it a seven is this. That seven is, is a measured result in response to the three. If I'm a three now, this is what would make it a seven. If I'm not grounded in my facts, then what happens is I say, this is what will be great. This is the goal. And that goal is very unrealistic and out of context of where I am right now. I feel like the episode I did on this was when I said, <laughs> I said if I dropped you in the middle of the, 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 uh, the jungle somewhere and you had to try to find your way out, you would need to have a true north, right? You would need to know where you are. It, this is similar to that, right? Like confronting the brutal facts of where you are is critical for you setting a reasonable, practical goal for what is next. And I think what I'm finding is that I'll set goals, but they're not necessarily grounded in my current reality, aka my facts. So what I'm realizing is that the possibility on the other side of this is if I actually get 
grounded in my facts, I create better goals. If I'm grounded in the facts of my life today, I actually create better goals, which is weird because I've been a goal setter my whole life, but at least my whole adult life. So, so the idea that I could set better goals, sexier goals, more compelling goals, more tangible goals by being honest about where I'm stuck in the facts of my life. That is a cool aha moment. That is a cool insight. So when I look at the mindset required to make this shift from just being a dreamer and setting goals that aren't grounded in facts to looking at the facts, grading my, grading my life in a particular area on a scale of one to 10, and then looking at what would make it a 10, so that I can set a goal that is actually tangible and exciting for me and, and, and grounded in something. The, the new mindset that is, that is there for me is, is to look at, um, the facts are where the lesson is. The facts, the triggers. Uh, so one of the reasons I don't want to look at the facts sometimes is because I'm pissed off or irritated at the facts. So if I can dive into, if I realize rather than hiding, hiding my head in the sand, Rather than trying to not look at not look at the facts, if I realize that those irritations, those triggers, those frustrations are actually where the lesson is, like that's where the lesson is. What I'm starting to what I'm starting to shift towards is running into the frustration. Rather than avoiding the frustration, I'm starting to run into the frustration. Usually, the frustration has to do with a fact of my life. Usually the frustration has to do with a fact of my life. Do you hear that? Usually the frustration I'm experiencing has to do with a fact of my life. Now that I know that, that looking at the fact leads to a cooler, a better goal, a more tangible goal, a sexier goal, I'm now running into, I'm now I'm now running into the triggers, the facts, the frustrations. I'm eager to find them. I'm like, ah, oh, damn, I'm frustrated by that. Let's go look at that. And when I look at it, I, I uncover a fact and I uncover a limiting belief and I uncover some of the patterns and stories and behaviors that are limiting me. So rather than wandering, which is the problem, right? The problem is I'm not looking at the facts and so I wander around and around and around, never learning the lesson that life wants to teach me. Setting goals, look at the mountaintop, isn't that amazing? And then for years, staying stuck, wandering and wandering and wandering. I'm now like, ah, here's the paradox, the frustration, the irritation, that's where the lesson is because it, it exposes a fact. And from the fact, if I can find the fact and grade it on a scale of one to 10, ah, oh, this is a two, this is a one. What would make it a seven? What would make it a 10? Now I can set something that actually is tangible to get me out of here. Get me out of here. How do I get out of here? How do I get out of this fact? And now I set a goal that actually gets me out of the fact rather than a goal set out of fantasy like, oh, wouldn't this be great to have a million dollars in my bank account? Wake up. What is the fact? And from that fact, I can set a more appropriate goal. Now, once I set the more appropriate goal, I can create an action plan to get me to that goal. And from that goal, now I could actually get to the things I've been dreaming about. But without being founded or grounded in the fact, you're, you're just a dreamer. You're just a dreamer. And those goals don't happen. You're too afraid to look at the facts of your life. And so you keep pretending like the facts aren't there. You, like me, keep pretending the facts aren't there. And this is why you wander. This is why you're stuck. This is why you, like me, are stuck. So how do we get out of here? Well, one, you have to shift your mindset to realize that when you feel frustrated, irritated, triggered, there's a lesson there. It points to a fact of your life. And if you would rush into the fact, rather than avoiding it, burying it, distracting yourself from it, medicating from it, numbing out from it, if you would rush into it and confront it and look at it, you would see that it is showing you something. 
What is it showing you? I don't know. You have, you have to answer that by looking at it. What is this fact of your life showing you? And if you could get honest about it for a minute, then here, and here's the method out of this, right? Here's the, 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 the skill set out of this. You grade yourself on that fact. This is the fact of my marriage. This is the fact of my bank account. This is the fact of it. And you just look at that number on a scale of one to 10. The fact is a one because of these things. And you just be with that for a minute. Damn, that sucks. A one? Hmm. What would make it? Here's the skill set. Now, what would make it a seven? What would make it a five? What would make it a 10? Like, look, set a reasonable, a reasonable increase and be like, based on the increase, what would I have to do to get the increase? Not the summit, not the mountaintop, not the impossible goal. Just tell me now, what would make it a seven? Now, 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 build some goals and plans around that. The reality is your, what happens is your dreamer sets these impossible goals, which is cool and sexy until it's not because you'd never get there. What is better, what would be better is if you created reasonable progress in reasonable time. And the way you get to that reasonable progress is by looking at where you're at now, right? If you're not used to, look, look behind me in um, outside my window here, outside my window, these are, there's hills behind my house. And I, every day I walk my dog up those hills. But if you're not even used to walking those hills, for you to set your, your sights and goals on climbing Mount Everest is ridiculous and dumb, right? If I tried to, I, frankly, if I tried to record a video walking up these hills, even though I walk them every day, trying to, to talk and record a video while walking, it leaves me, <laughs> it leaves me out of breath. So the idea that I'm gonna climb Mount Everest while I'm getting winded trying to talk to you on a video while walking my dog up a hill, that's dumb. And when I give you that example, you know that that's dumb. You're like, yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. But you do the same thing in your life all the time. You set these big goals and you have no foundation of facts. And so what happens is you, not only do you wander the wilderness of your life, but at some point you start to doubt yourself and question yourself. And you're like, dude, I'm never gonna get there. And, and, now, and now, rather than having built a life of progress, you've built a life of, pretend, right? You've built a life of like, you start to doubt yourself. It's very hard to build a business when you doubt yourself. It's very hard to take risks and make decisions that are game changers when you doubt yourself. Like, man, I've, I've tried all kinds of things. Yeah, but you've tried things, you've tried things that have, that, that aren't about getting you from a three to a seven. You've tried things that are trying to get to the summit of Mount Everest when you, when you can't even walk up a hill. So listen, gang, I'm totally coming to you from the trenches of my life. I'm not saying that I've mastered this. What I'm saying is that um, <laughs> I find massive confidence and strength and certainty in looking at the facts of my life. Some of you, I've talked to some of you, some of you think that being vulnerable and transparent and talking about all the places you don't have it figured out is a place of weakness and that you would never be caught dead creating a video about where you don't have it figured out. And that's your loss. Because what I know is that every time I press into the truth or the facts of my life, I have more foundation. I have a stronger foundation than I did before. And I only find strength in the facts of my life. And you're scared of the facts of your life while I'm trying to press into the facts of my life. Do you see the difference there? Do you see how in a year from now, I will be further up the mountain of my life than you will be because I keep pressing into the facts of my life and you, che you keep trying to avoid them because you think they, they equal weakness. You think the facts of your life expose weakness and you should just keep telling yourself some beautiful, positive story. And I'm starting to see that the more I press into the facts of my life, the stronger my foundation is because I can go from a three to a seven. And in a year, in that area of my life, I'm at a seven. And then I get to decide the next ceiling, right? My, my, my seven now becomes the floor. 
and I get to set an, and it, and, and, the, and it becomes a three. And now my, my seven became a three and I get to set a new seven because my floor became, the, the, my ceiling became my floor. And now I get to set a new goal. And every year I leapfrog my life while you keep pretending that the, the facts of your life aren't there. While you keep keeping a, while you keep keeping a positive attitude, in, AKA not looking at the facts of your life, I keep pressing into what's not working. And by the way, I keep sharing what's not working. Every, most of these episodes, 50% of these episodes, if not more, 50% of 363 episodes, if not more, are me sharing what's not working about my life. And I'm sharing that with you. And every time I share it, I have one more one more block in the foundation, creating a solid foundation for the the life that I'm living, the, the, the direction I'm headed. So I'll wrap with this. I think one of the things that is not working in the world is everybody pretending that they have it figured out and not willing to look at their own, not willing to look at the plank in their eye. You, you can see this right now in politics. You can see this in uh, this pandemic. There's a lot, you can see this in religion. There's a lot of places this is happening where everybody's wanting to judge everybody else. When you start to press into your facts of your life, do you look at the plank in your own eye of what's not working and you confront that and you look at it on it, you grade that plank in your eye on a scale of one to 10 and you get honest about that and you start to go to work on yourself rather than telling everybody else how to do it, right? What you start to find, what I'm finding is that there's this massive foundation of truth and facts. And from that place, I can set better goals for myself than just pretending like that's not there, okay? Now, what if the world, let's look at this existentially for a minute. What if the world, what if the, the every human in the world started, work, started to work on their facts rather than preaching from a soapbox of how they think it should be, but not confronting their own facts. They started to confront their own facts and, sh and what they preached was not some lofty summit of Mount Everest from something that has no, that, that they're not grounded in. But what they started to preach from, what they started to speak from were the trenches of their own life. Hey guys, here's what I saw in the places that I'm not being honest with myself. And they started to share that. And all of a sudden the conversation the world had with itself were all the places, all the things we're learning from the facts of our life, not the, not the Ah, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not the philosophical mountaintops. What if we started to share with each other the facts of life, the things we're learning from the facts of our life and not the, not the existential, you know, possible mountaintops of our life? That would be refreshing. That would be refreshing. I would like to know what you're learning from your life. What is your life teaching you? I keep sharing what my life is teaching me. How about you share what life, your life is teaching you? And this is how, this is how marketing, you wanna bring this back to marketing now? Let's bring this back to marketing. This is how you start to, from your business, establish a foundation of facts. And this is where you serve people from. You serve people from your facts. You serve them from their facts. And this is how you create actual change. Because if you don't have facts, then all you deal with is fiction. It's fantasy. There is no, if you don't have facts, then you're just dealing in, in, in uh, philosophy. The only way change happens is by you getting real about where you're stuck and where you want to go. And what I'm sharing with you here is that's what I'm learning, right? This is where I'm stuck. I'm a three on a scale, one to 10. And this is where I want to go. I want to go to a seven. So to get to a seven for me, this is what it would take. And now I'm setting goals, not based on the mountaintop and the summit of Mount Everest. I'm setting a goal to get up this, the hills behind my home to be able to talk to you on a video without being winded. Do you see the difference? And this is how you build a life. This is how you build a life of results that people want to understand. How did you do it? Hey, how did you do it? This is what makes it, this is what makes your business and your service valuable is that you got from where you were stuck to where you want to go. Not that you have some intellectual, 
uh, capacity to, to tell me philosophy. I'm not, inter I'm not going to pay you for that. What I want to pay you for is how did you get from here to there? Tell me that. Tell me how you got that result. But do you see in, the, in, in that very statement, the result happens from moving from where the fact of your life to the next goal. All right, gang. Wow. 25 minutes in. That was interesting. That was an iteration. Like I clearly I'm working through something. Clearly, thank you for being here in this conversation because I'm trying to trying to articulate something. You, you, when you guys come through my programs, you know that what I tell you is that truth comes out in iteration. That's one of the principles of my programs. Truth, your truth, the truth of your life, the truth of how you produce a result comes out in iteration. And iteration can sometimes be 25 minutes of you trying to put a finger on the thing that you're learning in life. I've shared with you for 25 minutes something I'm, I'm learning in life and I'm trying to put words to it. And those of you that stuck with me for 25 minutes, you stuck with me not because I gave you a bullet Cliff Notes version of it, but because you wanted to come along for the journey of, uh, of the nuance of it. Do you see how this works? We spend time together in these shows, in, in my show, you with me in my show, and others with you in your show, because we want to hear the nuance of how you're getting to the answer. Like, what are you seeing? This is a drastically different method, yes, of marketing than having 60 second sound bites where you're Instagram perfect and coming off to the world like you have all the answers and you've already summited Mount Everest. Screw you if you think you've already summited Mount Everest. I've been in this game long enough to know that that's not how it happens. Start being honest with me about where you're stuck and what you're learning. Rush into the facts of your life, grade yours. And I'm more interested, I'm more interested in where you're at a three on a scale one to 10 than where you're at a 10. Don't preach to me from you being a 10. Tell me where you're stuck and how you got out of it. How did you get from a three to a seven? That's what I want to know. Quit telling me that your life is perfect. By the way, most of you in this tribe, I get that you're not like that, right? And that's, it. so, <laughs> so, I get that you're not like that. And what I'm telling you is there is freedom in sharing with the world where you're a three on a scale one to 10 to start sharing like here, I was stuck. Here are the facts of my life and I moved my way out. That's the stuff we want to know because it's real, because it's real. And that is what marketing for the rest of us is. And if you'd like to learn more about how do we take the life lessons that life is giving us and move it into something that makes a difference for others, that's what I go through in my six week program called Marketing for the rest or uh, Groundswell Method Intensive, right? The Groundswell Method Intensive program is a six week program designed to help you start to find the way to articulate your message. When I look at the applications and the, the assessments I take of people who come into that program, every one of them say, I don't know what to say. But every person that comes into it has massive important work to do in the world. They just don't know how to talk about it. So if you'd like to learn how to talk about your important work in the world, I invite you to go to groundswellmethod.com. You'll see some free videos there. And from those free videos, there's an application on the last page where you can apply for my next coming program, right? My next upcoming program, where we go into this very work. How do we start to, to bring out and iterate our truth so that we make a real connection with people who are also wrestling with where they're stuck in life, right? They may not be looking at the facts of their life. And in order for them to experience the transformation you offer in your important work, they're going to have to get very honest about the facts of their life. But that means you have to be able to talk about the facts of your life. That's how we lead people out of, right, where they're stuck to where they want to go. So if you'd like to learn more about that, again, go to groundswellmethod.com. Here's to you, gang. Here's to you. Pressing into the facts of your life. See you tomorrow.